This is the seventh month of the year. It is a month of perfection. And by extension, it is a month of rest. Hallelujah. The seventh month is a month of rest for you. Every toiling, every laboring, every striving, every hard work of the past. Today, this month, God is saying to you through his word, rest is coming for you as you begin to reap the harvest. Rest is coming as you begin to reap the harvest of the seed you have sown in the past, of the labor you've exerted in the past, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, beloved, please open your heart to receive the word as we share together from the word of God. Amen and amen. So our topic today, briefly, is rest and rise. Rest and rise. So God is saying to you expressly that your rising is attached to your rest. That his ability to lift you, his ability to promote you, to take you high, to bring you out, to launch you forth, is connected to your own ability to take your rest in him. Rest and rise rise and we're going to read a popular scripture from the first book of the bible from genesis genesis chapter 8 genesis chapter 8 verse 4 to 5 verses 4 and 5 is the story of the aftermath of the flood that besieged the world the bible says in genesis chapter 8 verse 4 to verse 5 and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month in the 10th month on the first day of the month where the tops of the mountains seen. So the waters began to assuage, began to wade up from the face of the earth from the seventh month of the year from the seventh month of the year the bible says that the ark that noah was in rested on the top of the mountains of ararat so expressly this is the word of the lord to you prophetically by the infallible word of god that in this month of july the seventh month of the year you will enter into your season of rest amen you will enter into your season of rest in the name of Jesus. Comfort on every side, every rocking, every storm, every form of um, storms, every form of raging all around you up until now. God is bringing you into your season of rest on every side, in your marriage, in your career, in your place of work, in your ministry, in your body, in your health. Rest is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we speak this word to you right now, the word of life, the word of power, that word is going to be ministering rest to you. It's going to be ministering rest to you because it's in your rest that God will lift you. It's through your rest that you will rise. In the name of Jesus, you will rise. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. A few instances in scriptures come to mind right now. I'd like to share them with you very quickly before I begin to look at the point we are going to be looking at from that story of the flood. For example, in that same book of Genesis, the Lord provided help. God provided help for Adam or for Adam after he was put to rest. After he was put to rest, God had given Adam work in the garden to tend the garden to keep it. And Adam had been doing that for several days, possibly several weeks and several months. And God came to a point in the, in the life of Adam and said, no, this man cannot continue like this. Adam cannot keep working and working and working like this. Oh, if he keeps going like this, his health may fail. If he keeps going like this, he may lose his mind. If he keeps going like this, things may not, he may not be efficient and effective in the work. So what did God do? What did God do? God put Adam to rest in Genesis chapter 2. God put him to rest. And then when Adam rested or was rested, God took one of his ribs to form and to make a helpmate for him. 
So it was in this place of rest that God fashioned help for him. It was whilst Adam was resting that God fashioned his help for him. And when he woke up from his place of rest, from that place of refreshing, he was able to identify Eve. And Adam said, now this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam recognized the help that God sent for him when he woke up from his rest. When God put him to rest, God made the help for him and presented the help to him. The help that you need, the next level that you need, the promotion that you need, that supply that you need, beloved, will only come to you in the place, from the place of rest, when you hope thou in God, when you rest in God, when you cast all your cares upon him, knowing that he cares for you, not being anxious, not being worried, not being bothered. Imagine Adam concerned and worried about how he was going to get help to do all the work he had to do in the garden. How much worry would have brought Eve to Adam? How much worry would have made God to provide help for Adam? So Adam needed not to do anything but to yield to God by resting, by sleeping, by lying down. And in the place of his rest, God fashioned a perfect help for him. You will receive your own perfect help in this season, in this month of rest, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The story also has it in Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, the story of Peter. Peter, after he had an encounter with Jesus in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus said, Oh, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father in heaven revealed this to you, that I am the Son of the living God. And he says, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm sure that this message, that this utterance from Jesus entered into the spirit of Peter, such that when he was captured in Acts chapter 12, and he was thrown into the prison, the Bible says, Peter was sleeping. He was resting. Even in the prison, where he was bound, hands and feet, where he was locked behind the prison doors. The Bible says, Peter was resting. He was sleeping. He was so confident in the word that Jesus spoke to him that through the revelation that came from you, Peter, I will build my church. And the church was yet to take off fully at that time. So Peter just knew, I can't die now. He just knew God is going to make a way out for me here. And that was exactly what God did. God raised other disciples, other followers to be praying for him. And heaven opened without Peter praying and fasting, binding and losing and worried about coming out of the prison. The angel entered into the prison, opened the doors, opened the gates and led him out. A man that was at rest, that was sleeping. God sent help to him in the nick of time. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive your help now in the name of Jesus. Let rest dominate your life. Let rest dominate your heart. Let rest dominate your marriage. Receive rest. Enter into your season of rest. As you rest and hope in God, he will make a way for you. Do for you what you cannot do for yourself. In the name of Jesus, amen. So looking at this story that we referenced in our text, the story of the flood and how God took away the flood from the face of the earth and brought the earth to a place of rest in the seventh month, I want to enumerate about four points here that will help you in preparing your heart for this season of rest, for the rising and the help that God is bringing you with. Number one point from that story, of course, the story began from Genesis chapter 6. The story began from Genesis chapter 6, when the Bible says God saw upon the face of the earth that the, the acts of men were wicked, and God repented, created man, and he said, Ah, I repented, created man, and he thought of destroying the whole earth, and but found one man, faithful, righteous, in Noah. And the Bible says God began to interact with Noah, in the course of time. So what happened? 
Point number one from that story that panned out in the life of Noah and his generation from Genesis chapter 6 all the way to Genesis chapter 8. Number one is the fact that God prepared an ark solution or he prepared a solution ahead of the flood that was going to destroy the world. We are looking at how to position ourselves for rest in God so that we will rise in life. Rest in God so that we will rise in life. First point you need to note from that story of Noah is that God always prepares a solution for you before the problem ever emerges. Glory be to God. For somebody, that is good news. That is good news. God was going to send the flood. They had not seen the rain at all. Everywhere was still dry. But God gave instruction to that man in whom he delighted in Noah. God said to him, build the ark to this dimension. Make it this wide. Make it this big. Make it this high. And he gave him further instructions. God prepared the solution that he needed before the problem of the flood ever arose. Beloved, that is how our God works. In Psalm chapter 90, verse 2, Psalm 90, verse 2, the Bible says, Before the mountains were brought forth, thou art God. Before the mountains were brought forth, thou art God. Or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Before your problems, before that issue, before that need, before that project, before that concern, Beloved, God has been, he has been, and the Bible says, God, if he be for you, nothing can be against you. Nothing in this world can ever be against you because God is on your side and he has gone ahead of that problem on your behalf. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. So what is your own stake in the fact that God has gone ahead of you? You now need to be led in following him. He has gone ahead. So what all you need to do is to rest to follow. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God will not lead you contrary to his plan for your life. And he will not lead you into the trap and into the camp of your enemies. I repeat that. God will not leave you, lead you contrary to his plans for your life. And it will not lead you into the trap or the camp of your enemies. So if you entrust your life to God by following the leading of his spirit, he will lead you into a place of rest and a place of lifting. Glory be to Jesus. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that you will be open to the Holy Ghost. Your spirit man will respond to the spirit of God, to be led by the spirit of God. You will not just be a, a child of God, a Christian by title. You'll be a Christian by being led by the Spirit of Christ, by being led by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, Isaiah 43 verse 2, the Bible says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. God speaking here to you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou passest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee when you pass through not if you pass through when you pass through not if you pass through that also simply means he had prepared you to go through he has prepared a way of escape for you he knows you are going to pass through it so he's waiting for you on the other side in fact he's going through it with you beloved whatever predicament whatever challenge of life Whatever oppression, whatever challenges you are going through today, I want you to know that God is in it with you. He is going through it with you because he has made a way of escape for you. In this season, the rest of the Lord will lead you through every challenge you are currently going through. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Second point to note from the story of Noah, whose ark rested in the seventh month is... God knew about the flood. Although Noah did not know about the magnitude of the flood, God was aware that there was a problem inside that humanity was going to go through, was going to be thrown into. 
God knew ahead of time that a flood was coming. Although Noah did not know, although members of his family did not know, but God knew ahead of time. And that's good news for you. I want you to know that God is aware of what we are going through. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 115, Psalm 115, that he that created the eyes will he not see? He that created the ears will he not hear? He that created his, the hands will he not be able to deliver? He that created the mouth, can he not speak? Can he not defend you? So beloved, whatever problem you are going through or you will go through, God had been aware in advance. Glory be to Jesus. He had been aware in advance. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 45, Matthew chapter 5 verse 45, that God sends both rain, rain and sunlight on the evil and on the good, on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So God knows the predicament under heaven that every man will ever go through. And he has gone ahead to make a way of escape for his own children. So beloved, whatever problem you are going through today is not beyond you. Why? Because God has been aware that you are going to go through it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 18. Malachi 3 verse 18, the Bible says, Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So God has a provision for you. He has a provision to preserve you, provision to protect you, provision to sustain you. God has made it for you as long as you are his own. Like he found Noah righteous in his generation, God brought him into a season of rest, into a season of victory out of every predicament of life. So beloved, God knows about that problem you are going through. Is aware of that issue of the fruit of the womb, aware of that barrenness, aware of that lack of job, aware of that opposition and victimization, aware of that pain, of that disease, of that sickness. Whatever it is you are going through, I want you to know, beloved, God is seen, he is aware. And because this word is coming to you today, everything you are going through, you are going through it to the other side, other side of healing, other side of wholeness, other side of victory, other side of fruitfulness, other side of promotion, other side of dominion, other side of testimony. You are going through to the other side because God is aware. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The third point I want us to learn from the story of Noah is that Scripture says where we read in the text in Genesis chapter 8, Genesis 8, 4 to 5, where we read the Bible says that on the 17th day, on the seventeenth day in the seventh month, the ark rested on mountains, on the mountains of Ararat. And God does not use words loosely. Scripture does not put words there for putting them sake. He puts them there to drive home a point to the discerning. As we discern the word of God today, he says, in the seventeenth day of the seventh month, that means there is always a, a day, a 17th day in your life, in my life. The days may not be the same, but I want you to know just one day is enough. The Bible says a day is like a thousand years before the Lord and a thousand years like a day. So just one day is enough for God to turn your story around suddenly. What you have been going through from January to June in the month of July suddenly on the 17th day and coincidentally and divinely tomorrow is the 17th day in this month of july and of course by extension every other day could be your 17th day a unique specific identifiable day in your life that god has prepared for your own encounter for your own divine intervention beloved you won't miss your day in the name of jesus you won't miss your season you must always keep hope alive, knowing fully well that there is a day with the Lord. There is always a 17th day where all the storms, all the raging, all the battles will cease, where all the challenges will vanish, where God will bring you to a new level of dominion, of increase, of abundance. There is always the 17th day, beloved. 
Don't give up before your 17th day. Noah stayed in the ark. He stayed in there, hoping and expecting that the same God who put me inside the ark in the midst of the flood is still alive. The same God who shut the door of the ark is still alive. The same God who had preserved me up until now is still alive. The same God who had preserved you and your family up until now is still alive. Whatever you are going through, beloved, I repeat, you are only going through it. He is going through it with you. He says, when I have come out, that I may become gold. When you have come out, that you may lack nothing. You are thoroughly prepared for the good and great works God has prepared for you ahead of your life. So, beloved, keep hope alive. Your 17th day will manifest. That day, God will decide. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, Ecclesiastes 3, from verse 1, it says, There is a time for everything and a purpose, a season for every purpose under the heaven. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to cry, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to kill, a time to make a life, a time to stand, a time to sleep, a time to sit, a time to wake up, a time to sleep. There is a time for everything. Beloved, God works according to timetable. And it will be in your best interest to submit your life to the timetable of God. Submit your home. Submit your career. Submit your marriage to the agenda of God. Don't run ahead of God and don't lag behind. Rest thou in God, beloved. There is a time for everything. There is the 17th day of your own manifestation. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 24, Psalm 118 verse 24, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So you trust in God today, you trust in God tomorrow, and you trust in God for the rest of your life because every day is a day of thanksgiving that the Lord has made and you must rejoice and be glad in it. Proverbs 23 verse 18, Proverbs 23 verse 18, it says, For surely there is an end and your expectation will not be cut short. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And then the fourth point, I want to enumerate the fourth point, is that your ark will rest on your specific mountain, not in a valley. The ark would have rested on a beige land, on a valley. But how strategic was that? How divine could that be? That God positioned the ark on the mountain top. On the mountain named Mountain Ararat. There is a mountain for you, beloved. There is a space for you at the top. Having your own label. Having your own identity on it. There is a place for you at the top. There is a mountain Ararat for you at the top. You must learn to rest in God to be able to rest on that mountain. Beloved. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 25, Psalm 75 rather, Psalm 75 verse 5, it says, Lift not up thine horn on eyes, speak not with a stiff neck. Why? Verse 6 says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one, and he set it up another. He put it down one, and he set it up another. God is the one who promotes those who are promoted. If God does not promote you, and you force your way, you skim your way up, beloved, you have only jumped up. In a matter of time, you are coming down. You have only jumped up. In a matter of time, you are coming down. But if you allow God to lift you in his own time, the one who has a specific day for you, the one who has a specific mountain for you, if you allow him, resting in him to lift you up, you will, lift, you will be lifted. Nobody can bring you down and you will remain there everlastingly relevant. Let God promote you. There is a place for you at the top. There is a mountain top position for you that nobody can occupy but you. Let God take you there, beloved. Glory be to Jesus. Rest and rise. Rest and rise. When the day of Joseph came, he was no longer going to be held back in the prison one more day. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 41, verse 1. Genesis 41, verse 1. 
when it came to full, two full years, at the expiration of two full years, as God had proposed and planned for Joseph, the Bible says Pharaoh had a dream and the butler remembered Joseph and they sent for him. God worked everything out that the place at the top that he had prepared for Joseph and he had prepared Joseph for, he was going to take him there after two full years. Beloved, there is a day for you. There is a mountain for you. And you can only access it when you rest in God so that you can rise in him. Rest and rise. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we begin to round up, beloved, I want you to know that what exalts you to your place of prominence and relevance in life is righteousness. It doesn't matter how a wicked person, an ungodly person, an unfaithful person, an evil person rises. Oh, the Bible says their rising is for them to fall, that their remembrance will be forgotten. So a wicked, unrighteous person cannot rise in life. If he goes up, he's coming down. If he goes up, he's coming down. So scripture says in Proverbs 14, 34, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalted a nation. Righteousness is what will exalt you. He says sin is a reproach to any people. Beloved, let God see you as his beloved child. Love God with the whole of your heart. Give your time, your resources, everything he has given to you. Give them back to him. First and foremost, your life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9, Hebrews 1 9, it says, Thou hast loved righteousness, and you hate iniquity. Therefore, even thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above, 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 above your fellow. Just keep on pursuing God, chasing after God, loving God, staying righteous, staying faithful with integrity, staying committed to the cause of the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Beloved, you will be lifted, you will be promoted. The best way to be promoted in life is to rest in God, is to follow God faithfully. And I can assure you, in the nick of time, in your own set time, your elevation, your rising will not pass you by. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You want to lift your hands and wave them to God, the one who lifts men up and is turned in your direction to lift you up. In this month of July, the seventh month of the year, the month of perfection and the month of rest. Give praise and thanks to God. Say, Lord, thank you. I rest in you. I hope in you. I put my faith in you. My brother, my sister, your rest in God will rise. Your trust in God will rise. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and it will direct your path. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6. So beloved, the Lord God is giving you rest in this season. That the remaining days weeks and months of the year you will function from the place of rest you will operate from the place of rest and the more you rest in him the higher the lord lifts you in the name of jesus the more you rest in god the higher the lord opens doors for you in the name of jesus the more you rest in god the more god sends help to you in the name of jesus so shall it be thank you heavenly father Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. If you are here to give your heart to Jesus, that is where it begins from. That is where your rest begins from. The Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, it says, Let come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's all about giving your life to Jesus, the one who can give you absolute peace and rest in the midst of the chaos in the world. And as you receive that rest, he is bound and committed to promote you in life and to cause you to rise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.